Welcome back to Femria Canine Training and on today's video we're going to be answering some more of your questions to hopefully help you become higher level canine leaders that can raise perfect canine companions. Welcome back to Femria Canine Training. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and the founder and CEO of FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This is my wonderful wife, Rachel. You guys have been asking her some questions over on Instagram. She's been collating them, chooses a couple out at random, asks me, and then hopefully we'll be able to help out. So without further ado, let's dive into the very first question. Okay, so the first question we've had from a couple of different people. Um, I'll read you one and um, but it's all generally okay. the same kind of subject. cool 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 so um it is someone who's bought the perfect puppy course they're gonna receive a german shepherd puppy in september um their question is with socializing manners and obedience what do you think is good play what should you do and shouldn't you do they just want to make sure they're not creating bad habits and they've got children as well so it's kind of playing and also we've had questions about um, two dogs playing together and when you should interrupt that Yeah, or it's a very common, especially for first time owners, because it can be quite, I don't know what the word is, but you can be quite surprised at just how rough puppies can appear to be mm -hmm. playing. Puppies as well, and dogs, not just puppies, can be very vocal during play and it can come out in growls and grumbles and barks and snaps. And it is quite easy, especially for not very experienced people, to misread what is very normal, common, playful behaviour for warning signs of aggression or any kind of negative thing. So with this, it's more difficult. There's not necessarily as a clear-cut answer as you might like there to be in many other areas because a lot of it does come down to subjectivity. So when I, I like big, large, powerful dogs and I like to play with my dogs, you know very well that I like to, I'm a rough house with my dogs all the time. For me, it's the, the key point is that you as a household need to sit down and decide what your boundaries for play are and what you will allow to be acceptable between your dog and other dogs and between yourself and your dog and this always always goes back to being a calm consistent leader because the leader in the relationship in the canid world will make the decision of when to instigate play what play is too much and then when play stops and that is the key you need to make sure that there's no right or wrong answer it's very subjective some people are shocked about how um, rough I can play with big powerful mastiff type breeds but the key and my confidence and skill set allows me to ensure that whenever if I think it's going too far or I'm done it stops and it's over and I make that decision not the dog so I think the the wider answer unfortunately I can't give you a super uh, an easy quick answer is that you need to always focus on your leadership and then ensure that you make the decisions of when to play and you make the decision of when is too much and when play stops I mean that's the the key point okay awesome any other questions for this video are we going to do two Good. I thought like I was going to waffle on for about 10 minutes on that answer, but I, I think I did think all right. Did, actually. Mm. No, I think that was okay. I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to say something because it, it has really wound me up and I'm guessing you know what I'm probably going to say. say. A couple crazy. of people, and it is always the case on YouTube that it's one or two people ruin it for everybody else has made, some have been veiled in constructive criticism one or two have been quite nasty towards Rachel being a part of these videos um, if you would have caught me at the time of me reading that this would have gone a lot differently but obviously as things are I calmed down and relaxed but it got to a point where you didn't want to do this anymore no, did you not really. and then that really bothers me which is why I imagine I can tell you being a bit more quiet because you're being a bit more reserved so if you've got a problem with Rachel being in these videos I highly suggest and I'm going to say this as nicely as possible that you unsubscribe and go and follow somebody else I really like how we do this. The idea is that Rachel is the voice of you guys. Rachel isn't a professional, nor does she claim to be. However, I can guarantee that she's a better leader than most professionals out there. But she is offering, so I'm not just staring at a camera and waffling on, and what I think might be common sense and easy for me to understand, you might not. And I think where this Q&A has been really fun and successful is you've been able to bounce that back off me. So... I'm not going to go off on one about it, but for those couple of you that were, and I try not to swear on these channels, so I'm not going to do that either. 
I just suggest in a nicer way as possible, just go away and find somebody else. There's loads of other trainers. For everybody else that is watching and does enjoy Rachel being a part of these videos, because I know you are out there, maybe drop her a message on Instagram or down in the comment <laughs> section below. But let's move on with the next question before I get all high rate and angry and protective. <laughs> Do you want some personal questions? Yeah, should we do a personal one? Let's try and make it a bit more fun. Okay, personal question. How did the scar on Will's forehead happen? Oh, this one. Well, Harry Potter. My Harry Potter scar, because I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could sit here and come up with some incredible story that when I was working with wolves in Norway, one of them tried to attack me and brutally savage me and through my excellent skill set, I diffused the situation. But that, that isn't what happened at all. When I was a kid, I used to sleepwalk really badly and I was playing cricket with my brother in my sleep, dived off my bed in my sleep to catch a ball and hit my head on a wardrobe, split it straight down the middle. So I always think, picture my parents of me having to walk down the stairs, head split open, you could see my skull, blood all down my face and I'm still moaning oh, that my brother had hit the ball too high because I'd still thought I was playing this game of cricket. But can you imagine that being our boy, one of our boys okay. coming downstairs? No, I really can't. Now this scar, that one has a much better, more interesting <laughs> story, but we'll save that one for another video. You have to make sure you subscribe and come back for that one. Actually, they can probably find out that one. Yeah, if you go digging on the internet enough, there's a video. I might have made it private, actually. Is it on the K9 show? No, it's on one no. of our old other channels. Oh, okay. I'll say anyway, I had a tumour on my thyroid. Again, I used to tell everybody that I got, I got cut got Slash. shanked yeah no i had a tumor <laughs> on my thyroid that had to get removed but it has left a cool scar so i've got you two cool scars you can't really see it actually now i've been growing beard, out my beard yeah. but yeah, yeah can you see it yeah mm. there yeah cool should there we do another go. one one more and then we'll wrap it up okay um, and by the way, while you're looking for that, I first of all <laughs> massively apologise about the squeaky chair. And you might notice that the set's a bit bare because we are moving over to the new office this week. We're in transition between this older office and because Fenrir is growing so quickly as a company and we're bringing on so many members of staff, we're moving over to an office. It's nearly four times the size and it's looking amazing, isn't it? I can't yeah. wait till the new set. There's and... been some sneak peeks on Instagram. We've had good feedback. Oh, have we? Fair yeah. enough. Cool. Well, go on. Rachel, I'm By the sure time is. this video goes up, we'll be over there. Yeah, we will probably, yeah. yeah. So, cool. But yeah, that's why. And the squeaky chair that I know bothers, there's a few people cronk. I know you're one of them, my friend. It really <laughs> bothers you that I've got this squeaky chair for years. It is going in the bin. I've bought fancy new ergonomic <laughs> chairs that are silent. Okay, one more question. <laughs> this is another kind of personal question. Okay. But not, it's more about dogs. Um, and that is, would we ever consider breeding? dogs not um <laughs> this is a murky topic because again like anything in the world people tend to be quite militant don't they i'm on camp this so then therefore you over on camp that are wrong i personally have no issue with breeding dogs i have no issue with people buying puppies i've got issue with bad breeding practices and i've got an issue with people buying puppies and giving them up when they're not ready um i don't think the solution is to ban all breeding um, and there's a part of me that is drawn towards using this platform as we grow to breed. I had this idea of kind of like the Fenrir family guardians and breed some of our own like impeccable examples of the best family guardians in the world. So maybe a few of the Mastiffs. That's crossed my mind a few times. I haven't got time. I've got bigger ambition not bigger ambitions i've got different ambitions that just would leave that would be a dedicate to do that properly uh, would be yeah. a dedicated task i think task. if we were going to do it we would want to commit ourselves fully mm. to it and we just don't really yeah. have the capacity to do that but that also like one of your future ambitions is obviously like more of a rehabilitation yeah shelter kind of thing and it just the two don't necessarily go yeah. together I've, I've and spoke, i would rather do that i won't speak for these people but i have had conversations with kind of being affiliated with other people in a similar mindset that are interested in breeding i've also thought about like a fenrir approved breeding scheme breeder scheme so people the biggest question we get don't we is can you recommend me a breeder in this country for this yeah. breed and we have to say no a dozen times a day 20 times a day yeah. maybe more um 
and it's just I will not recommend a breeder unless I truly believe in that. The only one at the minute is 12 Titans over in America for Connie Corsos because we have partnered with them because I do trust their practices impeccably. So maybe at some point we could evolve that and grow that, but that would be a, somebody's job full time in itself to maintain and ensure that they are yeah. meeting our high standards. But in terms of us breeding, no, dogs. maybe not. Maybe I'll retire to it one day. Yeah. In the mountains on a big ranch in Colorado. <laughs> when we get divorced <laughs> yeah yeah i'll be a lonely man in the mountains of colorado breeding kangles and corsos but yeah we'll leave it there so <laughs> thank you very much for watching <laughs> the video nice... <laughs> if you enjoy it thumbs up subscribe like all that jazz come and say something nice to rachel i would very much appreciate it and i'll see you on the next episode of femrick canine training